Hi, this is Chico Resch. You are listening to the Let's Go Devils podcast on the Primetime Radio Network. Happy Devils Friday. This is Game Day Live at the Primetime Radio Studios. I'm your host, Sam Wu. Streaming live on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Twitter Live, and Twitch on the Primetime Radio Network. You're probably wondering where my co-host is, Vinny Parisi. Oh, he's at a big, 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 gigantic family party right now. But he takes no shifts off. We got him in the via the phone lines. Vinny, you're on with me right now. Take two for those that weren't listening in <laughs> before. <laughs> Hello, Sam. And thank you for having me as always. I'm excited to join in via the telephone for a couple minutes here before... The Devils take on the Nashville Predators. I'm looking forward to a big game. It's been a while since these two have played each other, so I'm strongly looking forward to it. Uh, Absolutely. So uh, big news uh, coming out yesterday on Thanksgiving. Nathan Bastion is back with the New Jersey Devils, claimed off of waivers off the Seattle Kraken. So basically, Tom Fitzgerald didn't lose anything uh, in that whole expansion draft. He gets his uh, big forward back. But also, I hear he's playing tonight. Yeah, that's great news for the Devils. That's two expansion picks that didn't really pan out for the two expansion teams over the last couple of years. John Merrill's a good player, but he wasn't what Vegas probably thought they were getting when they took him from the Devils. And then, for some reason, just things didn't work out well between Bastion and the Seattle Kraken. So it's good to see the Devils give him another chance. He's probably considered an upgrade analytically over certain players in the bottom six that have been going out there for the Devils. But it's good to have a little depth as well as they get healthier when Jack Hughes returns and whatnot. But I do think this is something that can help the team, and he brings a physical presence that every now and then contributes a little bit of offense. Some of the numbers from his games in Seattle suggest that there will be a slight turnaround at some point. Hopefully it's sooner rather than later when it comes to the Devils. Yeah, and... uh... You know what, we, we talked about beef, beef with the Devils. That's what Tom Fitzgerald promised in the offseason. Losing Bastion right off the bat didn't make me feel that confident, but signing Dougie Hamilton, trading for Ryan Graves on, on the blue line, okay, okay, that's all right. But really, getting Bastion in really changes the whole dynamics of the bottom six forwards. Would you agree with me, at least in the Eastern Conference, the Devils actually have probably the the best bottom six forwards in the league right now, or at least in the Eastern Conference? Uh, they're definitely in the mix. I think that's what's keeping them afloat without Jack Hughes is the fact that they definitely have some higher-end bottom six players. And what would turn the Devils in from a playoff team into a Stanley Cup contending team would be the stars becoming like those top-of-the-line NHL stars to complement those great bottom six players. So, yes, I agree with you that they are at least in the mix. There are a lot of teams that would trade their bottom six directly for the New Jersey Devils' bottom six. The BMW line. We talked about that uh, many times last season. Unfortunately, the W of that line is on injured reserve. But Jimmy VC has been holding his own. A matter of fact, I think he's uh, exceeded all of our expectations so far this season. So what do you think of perhaps the VC Mikey McLeod, Bastion line, how effective they could be, especially if the team needs some spark and momentum? Yeah, my guess is, so they're saying that Nathan Bastion has these great analytics, right? And they they suggest that a turnaround in terms of his offensive production could be imminent based on that. Well, I doubt he played with fourth-line players as offensively skilled as Jimmy VC and Michael McLeod over there in Seattle. So coming over to the Devils, they guys like McLeod and VC might be able to take advantage of someone like Bastion and the things he does to help a hockey team. So he's able to get to the dirty eras, win 50-50 battles, then someone like McLeod and VC could benefit from that. So I, I agree with you. I think it's a potentially really good fourth line, and it's something I would consider if I were the coach. 
Yeah, and, uh, you know, going into to Nashville, Devils, well, they meet, a, they meet a familiar face on the other bench. Do you know who I'm talking about? Oh, I think I do know who you're talking about. We're probably talking about the former head coach, John Hines. And it'll, he was on the hot seat there for a minute with Nashville last year, and they went on a big losing streak. And coming into this year, or they made the playoffs and by the end of the season last year, too. So after that tough streak, they went on a little bit of a run. And, of course, the, into this year, they're kind of they're a little better than I thought they would be to start the year. I had them coming near the bottom of the Central Division. So to see where they are in the standings, it's hard to rip on what's going on with John Hines' team right now. Yeah, they're 10, 8, and 1. I think these two teams are pretty evenly matched up. It should be very interesting how this game is, uh, you know, what's going to come of this game. They're playing at Bridgestone Arena. Uh, by the way, it's on Hulu and ESPN+. Plus. I hope you can get that at the big party out there. Oh, yeah. It'll be on my phone at minimum for sure. I'll be watching the game. Uh, I believe it's uh, Leah Hextall is going to be calling the game. So now I can finally get to listen to her because I I, I think she's calling the game, isn't she, tonight? Do yes, you know? yes. It, it is yeah. Leah Hextall with Kevin Weeks. That I do know. I'm not sure who the third person is, if they even have one, but I was watching the game between the Boston Bruins and the New York Rangers earlier, and they had – Steve Levy in the studio with Mark Messier and Chris Chelios. And right now the Chicago Blackhawks are playing the St. Louis Blues on ESPN Plus as well. And they got John Bucigross calling the game. So it'll be interesting to see what the intermission trio looks like. But yes, it will be um, Leah Hextall and Kevin Weeks on the call. All right. So Kevin Weeks, speaking of Kevin Weeks on Twitter, he wrote at JHU86 has entered the chat trying to hit me with some high heat. And there was a video of him practicing, uh, obviously wearing a, a jersey. And uh, well, let's just say he's, he's getting closer and closer coming back, huh? Yeah, it was pointed out to me that because the Devils have like an earlier game, they didn't necessarily have a morning skate. But it was a, a, a skate for the players who weren't going to be in the lineup tonight. And Jack Hughes was a part of that today with a – fully contact sweater. Now, I don't know if he'd be wearing a non-contact sweater if the whole group was out there, but it's definitely a good sign to see him out there do, getting his things, you know, getting his rehab done, and hopefully he'll be back within the next week or two. Yeah, and, you know, it's always a good sign to see him skating. Um, you know, I, I hope the Devils are doing okay and just fine without Jack Hughes. I hope they don't rush him back. I hope that this dislocated shoulder was just an isolated incident, a freak accident, because those things can be a, a normal recurrence. But I'll be honest with you, just seeing that video gets me fired up because right now it's almost like the band is getting back together with Bastion back on that fourth line role. Yeah, absolutely. And they're playing well without him. So getting him back, you would think really helps even elevate that even more. So, let's talk about Sharon Govich. He's been on fire the last two games, being at the center position. When Jack Hughes comes back, where, where are these, some of these players going to be ending up in the lineup? <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. We talked about that with Chico Resch last episode, and he brought up the idea of Dawson Mercer being so smart that he could easily play wing. And you might even see more offense come from him if that were the case. But I don't know. It's definitely interesting. Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer, to me, are locks to be centers. Nobody takes that away from them. So it'll be between Mercer and Sharon Govich. One of them could play center. One of them could play wing. Hey, maybe they could switch off and get the best of both worlds. Even Pablo Zaka is capable of playing center if need be. The only person that I think is locked into their line is probably Michael McLeod because he's the fourth line center and he sure and Hughes can be argued either way one or two depending on what the situation is so it's going to be interesting to see how that all works out well also you know you you know I talked about this on my blog earlier on hockeybuzz.com that it gives Lindy Ruff a lot of options here once Jack Hughes uh you know comes back and also with Nathan uh, Bastion in the lineup if you want to go with beef he can certainly put that in the lineup. If he wants to go with some finesse, he can certainly go.
go with that in the lineup as well. You've got – you can never get enough centermen on your team because these guys can play the wing too. You know, it's it's not – it's not – they can adapt to the situation. If you remember Sergey Breland years ago, he was a centerman. But you know what? He played right wing. He was an interchangeable part. And that's what I'm kind of seeing right now because – Pavel Zaka was a centerman, but he's more effective on the wing right now with the New Jersey Devils. Could Dawson Mercer make that transition? Or could Sharon Govich go back to wing? Now he's got a little confidence to maintain that scoring. I don't know. I don't know. But I think that I power would, play is going to be pretty potent if they put them all together. Yeah, no doubt about that on the power play. I would put Sharon Govich back on the wing. He knows how he figured it out. He broke the slump. The you know the water, the floodgates can open. I'm not really worried about Sharon Govich, no matter what position they put him at. He's a really good player. I think Sharon Govich. I think Jack Hughes kind of compensates Sharon Govich, you know, and and can help him when he's playing the wing. Sharon Govich. Absolutely, so I think and that's something Jack people Hughes haven't talked back, about enough. Yeah, and I think when Jack Hughes comes back. I think that's going to solve a lot of these mysteries and problems. It's just we've only seen four periods of it. And so far, those four periods have been the, a pretty good start to the season until he went down. Yeah, he'd probably have north of 20 points by now. I mean, he's one of the best forwards skill-wise the Devils have ever had, and he's just, like, really starting to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we got it just a couple minutes uh, with you, uh, Vinny. Um, so, what are your predictions of this game? What are, what are, what do you think is going to happen? Tell me the story. Yeah, man. I want to hear the Vinny Parisi prediction. Yeah, so going into this game, I concentrate on the defense as always. Each team has a pretty good group back there right now, playing well and good goaltending, of course, with Saros and Blackwood. So. I think there's a chance that it's a lower scoring game, kind of like last time. I thought the Devils would, I think I predicted two to one over the Minnesota Wild. I'm kind of going in the same vein here. I'm going to give a little more scoring, though. I think there will be some good defensive plays, but I also think each team is capable of using their defense to create offense. So you might see a little bit of that in this game as well. I'm going to take the Devils four to three. Wow. I'm going to save my predictions towards the end of the podcast because I'm going to make you listen. While sure. you're at the big party. But Absolutely. I will say, you can't see this right now, Vinny, but my Andre Johnson jersey just came in the mail, and it's hanging right behind me. A. Dot Johnson, number 80. Big inside that, joke of the Let's Go Devils podcast. But it's a nice jersey, awesome. actually. I love yeah. how committed to the joke you are, and that's awesome. I'm a big fan. <laughs> All righty, Vinny. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy the party. Thanks for making time, and I'll see you Sunday. Of course. Thank you so much. We'll see you then. That is Vinny Parisi, PucksandPitchForks.com, contributor, phoning in on his own podcast, Game Day Live, as we're at the primetime radio studios. Yeah, I'd like to hear your predictions, your comments on YouTube Live channel let's go devils facebook live at let's go devils podcast twitter live at let's go devils pod and twitch at let's go devils podcast see that uh, joey saying l f g d exclamation point woo getting fired up craig best l g d i see lisa watching oh how was your Thanksgiving meal yesterday? Did it feel good? Didn't feel good. Devils are doing all right. Yeah, they lost the other night in the skills competition, but they came back. They came back against the Central Division leading Minnesota Wild. Could have had it there. But now they get a little beef in the lineup. Getting... Nathan Bastion back. I look like a fool right now because I wanted Nathan Bastion to stay. I didn't want to lose that continuity. I didn't want to lose the young player that grew up with Mikey McLeod in the system. Dra uh, 
picked in the same draft year. Getty27 says, Johnson jersey blends in perfect. Love it. But where is Andreas Johnson? Also known as Andre Johnson. I haven't seen him on the score sheet. Let's hopefully that changes tonight against John Hines' Nashville Predators. My goodness. And it's good to see Jack Hughes practicing with the big club. Just seeing those videos gets me fired up like no other. Fired up, fired up, fired up, fired up. Getting fired up for Devils Hockey. Big weekend. Starting tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern against the Nashville Predators. Facing our former head coach, John Hines, who had been on the hot seat last season, but came out to a respectable 10-8-1 start with the Nashville Predators. Lindy Ruff, what kind of line combination is he going to put in? Nathan Bastion running on adrenaline flying all over the United States just to make this game. Landed a few hours ago, saying in the press conference, it's as if he hadn't left. Getting excited to see Mikey McLeod's line. A Mikey McLeod that loves to take face-offs and loves to win them. A high-percentage winning face-off guy, Mikey McLeod. I think Nathan Bashan's going to like that. I think Nathan Bashan's going to love this team with the excitement that's brewing. He's going to get a taste of seeing Dawson Mercer more. What he's done for the New Jersey Devils, he's going to miss his old linemate, Miles Wood. But I will tell you, this New Jersey Devils team has some beef on the blue line. Dougie Hamilton and Ryan Graves, that Thanksgiving meal that you had yesterday, did you pour on that Ryan Gravy on that turkey and Dougie Hamilton? Did you think that over Thanksgiving dinner? Be good, because if you did, it means you're a hardcore New Jersey Devils fan. Getty 27, you order that Jersey jersey yet? Now, I have not. But I have a surprise in the works about that jersey. Can't tell you. You're going to have to continue to listen to the Let's Go Devils podcast and Game Day Live and Woo Report and Devils After Dark, which we will be after this game. Scotty and I will go over the game that was. Getty 27 says, Mike, you going to have a little extra jump being back with this super buddy. Absolutely, he will be. And I hope he wins more face-offs. Have you seen those percentages this season? Being the face-off specialist, huh? Nate writes, have you seen the hat hats the Devils are giving away? Are they giving them away? Are you serious? I'm a season ticket holder. I deserve one. But I, I, you know what? It's a good thing. It's a good thing about this jersey. It's getting people talking. And that's what we want. We want people talking about the New Jersey Devils. Laughing stock of the league. Keep laughing because I think the Devils are going to get the last laugh, especially with this young nucleus, this new team. The way Tom Fitzgerald has handled everything, a lot of, a lot of it is Tom Fitzgerald, a lot of his trust in his scouting, and a little bit of luck here. Because I think it's great that Nathan Bastion is back with the New Jersey Devils. He was ours to begin with. Think about the owners. Or should I say managing partners of Harris Blitz Sports Entertainment? They got, what, 15, 17 million bucks out of this deal for the expansion fee? Wired into their bank account? Left some players unprotected? 
Nathan Bashing goes. Sees that the green is not really green on the other side with the Seattle Kraken. Put on waivers and he off he back with New Jersey. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Corbin writes, woof. Won't be back till next season. Jimmy signed a one-year contract. When Wood comes back, what well, happens to VC? Hey, you know what? Anything can happen. Anything can happen in the NHL, my friends. Big game tonight against the Nashville Predators. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Devils are back at home. To play the Philadelphia Flyers. And I'll be at Taj Lounge 973. You know it. I know it. Trade in the works, question mark, Corbin asks. Ah, you know, I don't speculate. I don't speculate on this podcast. Flyers hate day, says Nate Milbank. Hey, you know what? This Metropolitan Division is going to get tougher and tougher and tougher, literally and figuratively. Getting Nathan Bastion in the lineup helps because he is familiar with the organization. There is really no learning curve with him. He knows the coach. He knows the organization. He knows the players. He just went on a sabbatical for a few months. Glad he's coming back. And he may be he may be more appreciative and thankful that he's back with a real team. No offense, Seattle. No offense. Love to get your questions, comments. We're, uh, we're running. On, we're not in overtime. We got a late start. We had some technical difficulties to start. You guys like my Andre Johnson football jersey behind me? The greatest inside joke in podcast history. Those are just jokes. I was just kidding around. But I will say, though, I think tonight is going to be, again, let's see how Nathan Bashan does. I think he's going to, he has something to prove. He's running on adrenaline, and hopefully that ends up on the score sheet for the New Jersey Devils. John Hines, you know what he's going to do. He's going to mix up the lines. We're, we're not going to see the same line every, each time. We know that. But I think the Devils. They're going to come out flying. They're going to have a lot of energy. And I think they will come up on top. Five to three over the Nashville Predators. That's my prediction. As Nate says, you should buy an Andre Johnson jersey and send it to Johnson as a joke. Nate says, <laughs> I want him to autograph it. I want a picture with him and my my." Double XL Andre Johnson jersey. I want him to autograph it, and he's probably going to be like, what the heck is this guy doing? But that's all in good fun. It's harmless. It's a harmless inside joke. Love it, love it, love it. Well, I can't wait for this game to start. ESPN Plus, Leia Hextall, Kevin Weeks on the call. Should be interesting. I get to finally hear her. First time around, I was protesting. I'm not going to get ESPN Plus. I'm not going to get it. And I missed out on all, all the chatter. And thanks to my sister, now I have ESPN Plus. Big props to my sister hooking me up. All right. We're getting too close to game time. Enough of me. You probably want to get to the game. We'll be back. To Devils after dark, Scotty and I. Yes, the same Scotty as Sirius XM, Liquid Metal. Recapping the game that was. Hopefully we see a lot of scoring. Hopefully my prediction is correct, that the Devils will win. Nathan Bastion in the lineup. Jack Hughes getting healthier. Oh, it's a happy, happy Devils Friday. As we're closing the podcast. 
dropping the podcast a little later on our podcast pages. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. As we're approaching a big number of the podcast. More next week about that. Enjoy the game, everybody. This is Game Day Live. Till next time, let's go Devils. Devils.